Good morning from the farm vet truck. I've just had a call to go and see a calf that sounds like it's broken its leg. So, plan is go and have a look, assess if there's a fracture and where it is, and then see if we can fix it. That's always not cute. So rather than simply watch me put this cast on, I thought I'd run through it just in case some of you who are watching this haven't ever seen this done before. There are really three layers. So the first layer, which I've just started there, is the padding layer. So this could be with straightforward cotton wool. It could be with this product that I'm using here, which is sort of like a slightly more processed cotton. The function is the same. It's protective, it's padding. The key thing is, is that it provides protection. It's thick enough to provide protection without totally obscuring the fracture and meaning it still wobbles about with inside your cast. I always try and make sure to go up as far up the leg as I can be bothered really. Again, definitely um, as far as the cast will go up plus a little bit more. And there are some extra bits if you can to pad. So certainly over any lumpy bits. So the hock uh, in the back leg, the fetlock accessory um, digits and certainly, you know, in between the toes often are pinch points. So they uh, may require extra padding. Let's skip forward to the next layer. The second middle layer is the conforming layer and we call it that because it conforms or slightly squeezes our padding layer to make everything a bit more stable and a bit more uniform before we apply the rigid cast layer. Now stability is really important in fractures because although bones have a tremendous ability to heal, especially in young animals like this, they do need to be kept still. So the two fractured ends of those bones really do need to be kept as immobile as possible and that's where this sort of conforming layer really comes into its own. You can't really tell there what it is, it's, I describe it as a sort of stretchy woolen mesh so it stretches around that padding layer and then you can sort of make it reasonably tight. Not deadly tight because you can run into issues with car sores or you know, cutting off circulation, but just sort of in the sweet spot where it's tight enough to stabilize everything. This is the third and final layer, the actual rigid cast. This is what you get signed when you break your leg at school or break your arm. 
and it's kept in a sealed packet because it quite quickly activates when exposed to air and certainly just to speed things along I give mine a little dunk in that little pail of water it's just out of shot there just enough to activate it and uh, get whatever chemical process it is going and then once that's going we'll wrap it around starting roughly at the site of the fracture and sort of overlap each layer uh, by half the width of the cast so that's what I'll do there and as I'm doing this it's actually heating up if you could feel it you'd feel it start, starting to get warm and that is those chemical reactions taking place hardening the cast and it, depending on the weather I find it takes a little while for the cast to set normally it takes a bit longer when it's cooler but that may just be my imagination and um, certainly it certainly heats up um, quite significantly in your hand um, uh, before it goes rigid So, simple as that, especially with a bit of sedation to take the edge off. A padding layer, a conforming layer, and the rigid layer to stabilize the fracture. So as a general rule, a fracture needs to have the joint above and below it stabilized so they can't move for that bone to heal. And then finally, we give them a bit of painkiller because who wouldn't want a bit of painkiller after breaking their leg? Apart from that, I'll ring the farmer in two or three weeks take the cast off and see if we've succeeded. Right, so we're going back to have a look at this calf, take this cast off, hopefully the fracture's fixed. If not, it's not a disaster, we'll put the cast back on. I just thought before we head out, I'll show you what we use to take the cast off. So there will be a proper name for this tool. I don't know it, I just call it a cast cutter. I think it's also called a multi-tool, but it's, Looks like this. Uh, and when you just put the battery in, you can see it there just vibrating. So this physics is beyond me, and I'm not a very practical man anyway, but somehow this cuts hard stuff and not soft stuff. So I'll stop short of saying it's impossible to hurt yourself or cut soft tissue. If you know me, you'll know I'm reasonably gung-ho with this sort of thing. And touch wood, I've not managed to hurt myself with this tool yet. So, let's go. Just to show you what I was cutting off with uh, our cast cutters. This is half of the cast I managed to recover. So you can see there, still rigid. So what it does do is it cuts through this, the rigid layer of the cast, you can see there, but then you've got the cast leg, it won't touch underneath. So it's nice and safe. Job putting the bugger in. Yeah, they're always, they're always <laughs> more difficult to take off than they are to put on. No, 
that's good. That's you can see there. See it's formed a bit of a bony part there. But it'll be cra it'll, it'll walk out here crap. It'll walk out here worse walk, than. Walk out here worse yeah, 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 and it, it always, it's always quite underwhelming. But right. there's no like, there's no break there. You know. Let's, let's try again. I think humans, you know, have weeks of physio <laughs> equivalent injury. Right. We just sort of take the cast off and say, right, get on with it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, this feels strange.